God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. I tell you, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. I got up this morning. I don't know who's clapping with me, but you somebody didn't get up this morning. Somebody looked over at their husband, looked over at their wife, and she said, Hey, George. And he said, Hi, Sarah. And she said, I'm not Sarah. Come on, somebody. Not in his right mind. Somebody woke up this morning and couldn't move their left side of their body. Somebody woke up this morning and their face was disfigured, had a stroke. I'm trying to get you to understand that you're blessed. You're blessed regardless that you don't, your refrigerator may not be full, but you got something in there. You may not have no mansion, but you got a little apartment. Oh, amen. Come on. It's clean. It ain't a lot. The Bible said never despise small beginnings. Come on, church. Talk back to me. But today you're going to like it because we're going to talk that. And when we get done with it, you're going to see either you as a hypocrite or you're going to see people in the church that's hypocrites. Now listen, with after this message and, and if we reveal who they are, you, you, I want you to love on them when you see them on Sunday. Because they, they need to be delivered. Because it's very dangerous being a hypocrite inside of the church. I'm just letting you know, it's very dangerous. So we'll be in the book of Matthews and I advise all of you. To read Matthews chapter 6. Don't just listen to, to what I'm saying. Read it for yourself. Especially you church goers. That's going to church every Sunday. You have to understand that people is watching you. Just like they watch the pastors. We're watching you. Pastors is watching you. Co-workers is watching you. Matter of fact I was just wondering. Uh, how would you feel if the pastor went home with you after service Sunday? Could he go in your house? Mm, is it clean? What do it smell? Do it smell like somebody smoking blunts in the basement? Come on, talk back to me. Can he go home? Would he go home? Years ago, uh, pastors was invited over people's house uh, to, to have dinner. A lot of people don't invite you over to have dinner no more. Why? Because they're hypocrites. They're not living what they look like in church. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, uh, a wolf in sheep clothing. Never get along with nothing in the church unless it's uh, got something to do with you. If it's not your ideal, you don't you don't gr you don't agree with it. You'll raise your hand to dedicate everybody else to do stuff, but not not you. Since it's not your project, you don't have nothing to do with it. You you go against what the pastor and and the deacon and the elders and and the mothers and ministry. Uh, uh, you'll go against that as long as you don't have nothing to do with it. Come on, somebody. You already know somebody like that now. Let's read what it said. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at verse 5. And when thy pray, thy shall not be like the hypocrites are. For they love praying, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Be seen of men. I want you to pay attention. Write that down. Seen of men. Verily I say to you, this is God talking to us, Verily I say to you, you have your reward. So when you start boasting and bragging on what you've done, how how the ministry don't run unless you there, uh, 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 the choir can't sing unless you you lead the songs. Uh, that that's hypocrites. Always you raising your hand for somebody to do something that you should have done it. That's we're we're talking about hypocrites today, and most of us know. Them. And pastors, let me tell you something. I know most of you have been pastoring as long as me, but I've been pastoring nine years. I've seen hypocrites come into church. Well, what, what is it? What else is a, a hypocrite? A hypocrite is uh, someone that, that says that they love the environment. They love the land. Uh, they, they, they love the outdoors. They don't burn leaves. But you litter. That's what a hypocrite is. Say one thing and do other. Preach what well, preach to you about cussing, and then they leave out of the church and go home and start cussing. Come on, somebody. Hypocrite. That's what we're talking about today. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Listen what it say. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thy doeth thy arms do not sound the trumpet wow before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets that they may be glory of men verily I say to you they have their reward so what is it uh, 
it's just like somebody come to me and say, hey, uh, Pastor, can I get $100 until my next payday? And I say, sure. And then I get around people and say, yeah, I had to give them $100. They wasn't going to even be able to pay their rent. He said, do that in secretly because I'll bless you secretly. What you do secretly, I'll bless you openly. You've got your reward. You know, you, you can't help people and then brag on how you helped them. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hypocrites in the church. And now you're, you're probably already pointing your finger at somebody now if it's not you. Yeah, I would go to Bible study. That's you talking to a baby saint. You can't, a person that just come to church, they're trying to find out about the church, what the church do, and the only thing you're doing is sending out negative vibe. Yeah, 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 I, I wouldn't talk to her. I saw you talking to her, but I don't talk to her no more. Yeah, she, she a fake. Now, there's no reason you should be telling that baby saint that. That saint is coming out of the club, it's coming out of the world. It don't need to come to church, and they see the same thing that's going on in the clubs, in the church. Rolling eyes at each other. Mad at that woman because she got a better shape than you or got a better dress on than you do today. Come on, somebody. You don't want to say nothing until you got your hair and nails are done. We can't get you to pray until you got something new on. Come on, talk back to me, church. That's what we talk about, hypocrite. Hypocrite is, is, is something like a roach. One thing about any other bugs, I've had all kinds of bugs come to the, in the church. Butterflies, caterpillars, ladybugs, ants. But one thing that when I see, if I see a roach in the church, I'm calling the, uh, the, uh, the, the people to come out and spray the church. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm calling the, 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 the pest control. Come on, somebody. I'm bleaching things now because we have to kill the hypocrites that's in the church. Because they're, they're a disease right inside the church, killing the ministry. Some churches, some people, some church folks don't even like to see new people come. And that's terrible. You don't want the ministry to grow because of the fact that uh, she can type. She can do better things than you. She can sing better than you. She or he can pray better than you. And you get attitude. I've been sitting in this chair for 10 years. And now I come in the church and somebody said to me, that chair ain't yours. That chair not yours. Ain't no name on that chair. First come, first serve. Set somewhere else. And we can get that. And then pastors. we As pastors, we don't want to be hypo hypocrites. Thinking that you, you, you're God. You're not God either. And you have to know how to dedicate. That's why the Bible says it takes the whole body. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not good with computer stuff. My administrator, she's excellent with that. Why would I try to do computer stuff when I'm not good? I had to learn as a pastor, I have to learn how to dedicate work out. I have to push work out to people. They asked me one time about, we were selling dinners. Pastor, what should we charge? I don't know. Pastor, what should we wear? Should we get t-shirts for, I don't know. What time should we have? What date? I don't know. I have people set in that place. You take care of that. That's your job to take care of. My job as a pastor is really just to give the word, really. Now, here's the thing. When you start off a ministry, you have to be the janitor. You have to clean toilets. Come on, somebody. You have to cut grass. Me and elect Lady Denise, we, she was the semantic solo. She was the choir director. Uh, she was the choir. Come on, somebody. You have to wear different hats according to what's going on in that season as a leader. Yes, I've cleaned the toilet. I'll take this suit coat jacket off, roll my sleeves up, and guarantee I'll clean in this white shirt and this tie and these beige pants, and I won't have nothing on me. Why? Because I clean with my, with my hands, not with my clothes. Come on, somebody. We're talking about hypocrites, roaches. One thing about it, I can have any bug in the house. I don't mind no spider in the house. He can come in there. I'm going to knock his little web down, and I'm going to clean him up. I can see a butterfly and a fly in the house. Come on, somebody. A fly in the church. We're going to get them. But it's one thing about when you see a roach. you got to kill that. Why? Because they multiply. And what we don't want in the church is hypocrites multiplying. Well, I give more money than the church. If they don't want my idea, I'll take it. Come on, Pastor. You know who I'm talking about. I'll take my money out of Take your money out of the church. 
You think that this church ain't going to go because you ain't giving your little money? I don't care if you're giving the most money in your, if you, you're leading in the tithes and offering. But you're a hypocrite because you bear your arms in front of man. Matthews talks a lot about going home, having a secret place at your house. That's why the building is good. Don't get me wrong. We need the church to stay open. I ain't, I'm not tripping about that. But at the same time, I know you got to be a Christian at Walmart's. I ministered to a guy in Walmart who was going to kill himself, sitting in the stall, crying when I went in there. And I asked him, I said, sir, is you all right? He said, no, I'm on the bottom. I said, why did you say that? He said, I'm on crack cocaine, I'm on meth, and I'm on heroin. I lost my girl yesterday, and they repossessed my car this morning. I'm on the bottom. I told him, I said, well, good. I've been there. I was 11 years of crack cocaine. Uh, uh, smoker in the closet family members that left people that said I'll never be no good never amount to nothing got called on LaSalle Bridge uh, uh, with the police being a known drug dealer went to jail for 21 days the 18th day I changed my life I gave my life to Christ right on the jail floor come on somebody I was about 130 some pounds I, I was a mess but I changed my life. So that's what we're talking about today. We talk about hypocrites in the church. Let's look at. I want to give three points and we, we, we're going to be done. Uh, number one point. I give more money in the church than anyone. I'm going to write that down. I give more money in the church than anyone. Number two, uh, saying one thing and do another. You shouldn't be cussing like that. That ain't no Christian. Then you go home and cuss. Come on, somebody. Talk about my son should have went to prison, but your son should have just got house arrest. Hypocrite. Volunteer others, but rarely raise your hand to do anything. If it's not your ideal, you're not raising your hand, but you'll raise your hand to dedicate somebody else. Well, I think Vera should do that because she like to bake. No, you need to bake. If that came to your, your senses to do that, volunteer you bake. Don't be volunteering nobody else. Another thing I've seen about hypocrites. Have your own, yeah, hypocrites is like this. If it's their ideal, if they come up with an ideal and everybody agree with it, they'll work hard. They'll work hard to get that to be accomplished, because they want to be glory by people, by men. But long as somebody else's idea, you're totally against it. Well, I don't think we should have twenty pies. That's just too many. They just need to make ten. I told them to make ten. Come on, somebody. The guy that they cut the grass, he don't make the line straight. Always some negative. Yeah, yeah, you work in maintenance, you should clean the toilets. No, you clean the toilet. Hypocrites. Somebody said, we got to kill the roaches. So them the three points. I give the most money in the church. Them the, them the what you got to watch. If it hadn't been me for getting this church, this church, giving money, the church would have been closed down. You don't need to say that. You need to, we need to hush that. It talks about praying. And let, let me help some people real quick on your prayer life. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It even lets us know in here, but a, a easy pray. And I'll pray right now just to let you know that you don't need no 15-letter words to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, 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 announcing that you are the greatest. You're fabulous. You're outstanding. You're remarkable. You, you don't have to pray like that. You don't have to pray like, and God's going to do it. God help us in this land. God help us. You don't have to pray like that. Just pray natural. Lord, I don't know what to say. I just want to say I thank you this morning. I'm here. My children are safe. My husband is doing good. My job is good. Lord, I just give you the praise and I give you the honor. God bless you. Just pray. Just pray lightly. You don't need no 15-letter word. You know what I mean? 
That's hypocrites. They love to pray in the synagogues, on the streets, so they can be seen by men. Oh, I know it. I know it. I know you already pointing out some people in your spirit that you already know just like that. They said when you need to know how to pray, only thing you do if you want to learn how to pray. In verse 9, it said, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation from evil. And for thy is the, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Learn that. Start off with it. Our Father, which are in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Lord, we thank you. Bless my family, Lord. It's nothing, there's nothing to pray and just pray out of your heart. Pray what you feel. God is not looking at whether you spell words or pronounce them right. He already know what your thoughts is. He already know about you. Isn't this good? This is good news. Because we have to kill the people in the church that's running people away. Listen, church, you have to catch a first, uh, you have to catch a fish first before you can clean it. Sister, stop running the, the ladies away from the church because she got a better body than yours. She's young and she perky. You 60 and, 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 and sagging and you get mad at her and don't like her. I oh, can't stand her. She thinks she cute. Why she shouldn't think she cute? We, we, and, and if she thinking her cute, it's our job as Christian to, to calm that down. But the Bible said, encourage your own self. I don't want to kill that out of her. I just want to make sure she do that at the right time. It's time to it's, 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 it's time to be cute. Come on, if she thinks she cute, you think you cute. Come on, let them think they're cute, but let's 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 curve it down. Let's come on. If she if she if we, we see her acting like she thinks she cute, as Christians, let's get around her. Good church sisters. Get around each other. It's amazing. I watch hypocrites when new people come to church. They the first one in they face. And I'll be like, oh, Lord. Isn't it amazing, pastors? Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you got a group of people that lie, it is amazing how they gather up other people that lie like they do. If you get somebody in the church that's hypocrites, they, they form around all hypocrites. If you got people in the church that backbite, it's amazing. They collect people that backbite. It's starting to be a magnet. And you can always tell what type of person is when they join your church, who they hook up with. And you have to be careful. That's hypocrites. That's good news. That's good news. And one thing we got to understand, the reason we got to kill hypocrites, because, you know, the statistics show it's only 37% of people going to church. 37%. Now, if it's inside of the church, we're killing people in the church, because, you know, the church folks is the only people that kill their wounded. You come to church, everybody come to church hurt, everybody, from the peop the pastor to, to the guy that cut the church grass, we all are hurt, or hurting, so we all need help, that's why the church talk about, it takes the whole body, you can't do everything, you get mad if you don't sing for the pastor, uh, at the pastor's anniversary, you got mad because you, you're not going to do the sermonic solo, do something else. Clean the kitchen up after the dinner is served. You get your reward when you don't complain or when you do it in secret. I know I'm not even in the program, but I'm down here. I'm getting the pies. I'm cutting the pies, getting them ready. Come on, somebody. Talk back to me. Uh, let's look at Matthews chapter 7. Matthews chapter 7. Let's look at verses 3 and 5. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 and 5. And they behold thy the mote that's in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that's in thy own eye. Wow. Or how will if thy say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat that's in thy eyes, and behold the beam that's in thy own eyes. Verse 5. 
thy hypocrites first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. That's good news. That's chapter 7. In other words, what it's talking about, you, you talking about everybody else in the church. Well, they shouldn't be doing that, and they shouldn't be doing that, and they shouldn't be doing that. But what if the pastor follow you home? You still cussing, backbiting, uh, uh, partying, drinking, and on Sunday you act like you don't do none of that. That's a hypocrite. Come on, somebody. Everybody had a past. Everybody is, is, is not. Your flesh ain't saved. No way. You, I don't care how saved you got. Your flesh ain't saved. I can be, get done doing this and go outside and run into a woman on the street that's showing all her body. I have to gather my flesh back up and put it in training again. No, I can't look at that. Mm, no, I can't say that. No, I can't do that. Mm, I bet not do that. This is where Christians do. Bearing your arms in front of man. My God, how do you check yourself? Well, you know, as we're talking now, you already know whether that's you as a hypocrite or you can point somebody out that's a hypocrite. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pray that they change. How do we pray? How do we change them? Love on them. But normally the pastor have to really pay attention to hypocrites in the church because normally there's a lot of people in the church that's trying to tear down the ministry why they going to the ministry. That's a hypocrite. Never agree with the pastor and the first lady say. Always going to other people about what they should be doing. Well, if I had a ministry, this is the way I would be doing. I would make what you call them the deacon. I would make such a cousin right the elder. I would make sure I would take mother off the motherboard because she ain't never here. Uh, you got an opinion about. And it kills me when people say, Pastor, and God told me that we, we need to cut the grass on Wednesday. And, and the Lord told me that we need to have a spaghetti with the fish. And the Lord told me that uh, I need to get me a 7-Up. And the Lord told me that I need to take two tithes on. And the Lord, if the Lord is speaking to you that much, he need to give you a church. You need to get you a church, get some lawn chairs, and start your ministry. Because you don't run the ministry. Come on. Get in the, get in the body. Don't you try to be the body. The Bible said that the eyes is no good without the ear. It takes all of us. And quit bringing just your body to church. Bring your resources. Well, I ain't got no money to give. Well, you ain't talking about money. Bring your resources in the church, not just your body. If you account in your job, use that to help the pastor. If you can cook, get on the cooking committee. If you can sing, get in the choir. If you know how to lead, be a great leader. Stop being something in the church that that's not your gift. And quit mad being mad at people that have a gift to do something that you can't. There's tons of things that people do in the church that's better than me. Now, I'm the pastor, and there's some people in the church that go to my church will blow me away with scriptures and the knowledge of, of, of the Bible. I am the overseer, and it have to be an overseer over anything, though it forms chaos. That's why there's leaders. And my I have to know my job as a leader to dedicate our work. I can't do it all. You can't do it all. The next purpose can't do it all. It takes one body to join and make this work. Amen. I'm going to close out with this real cool. You can go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. We're going to close with this. And it's uh, really it's the Beatitudes. And I, li I like what it said. It said, uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall be inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Oh, I love this one. That they hunger and thirst after righteousness. After righteousness. That's verse 6. Chapter 5, verse 6. That's a good one to write down. That could be for you. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Righteousness. Come on, church. I'm talking to you that you know you're a hypocrite. Get close to the camera. I'm going to pray for you. 
Because you do not want to be going to church and nothing but a hypocrite. You're going to hell. Come on, church. That's 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 the wolf in sheep clothing he's talking about. You're a hypocrite. I don't even like when some pastors get up and they, I have a degree in sociology. I have three degrees in leadership. I was in Harvard for 22 years. I got a PhD. In, and there's nothing wrong with giving you, but that's a resume. Because if somebody out in the audience saying, mm, I can't hardly do that if, I, if he got all that to do this. Come on, somebody. You don't do that. Just tell the people I'm blessed. I have a few degrees to help me go to another level. But we have to understand the tools. You, you, anybody that's working through the ministry and got something to do with the pulpit, we got to come off that high horses. There's baby saints coming in that church. We got to love the drug dealers that come in there. We got to love the, you smell like weed or you smell like you ain't had a bath in a while. It is ministry that that's called ministry work. Where you take them and get a haircut and you take them and get a shower. That girl that's wearing them long dresses. Take her to the store. Do it Do it like a, she don't have to know. Get three or four sisters and say, let's meet at the mall. Talk to me. If we need to get her dressed, talk to the pastor. I'll go into our funding that we got that, that blesses people. We'll do a fast offering if we have to. Come on, somebody. Get her a nice outfit. She may not have no church clothes. Church, we're killing the people before we can get them in the church. Church. That's a hypocrite. Use them be attitudes to find out who how, who you are. Because most people look at it and say, mm, that ain't me. Yes, it is. When you go through it, do you do every church, to, do things in the church to be seen? Pastor, can I say one thing? I know it's testimony, sir. This the Lord just dropped this on my sphere. Watch this, church. Uh, if y'all would, get your book Bibles out and turn to say, this ain't no time for you to do that. You are out of order. God is a God of order. God ain't going to tell you nothing to do over, to, to make you look out of order. Come on, church. Quit lying on God. Quit coming to the pastor and telling him that the Lord spoke to me and we're going to leave this ministry. No, you're not leaving the ministry because the Lord spoke to you. No, you don't like that woman that you don't like at this church. You and her ain't getting along. Come on, because of some past relationship, your husband used to go with her years ago, and you found out that now y'all don't get along. All of that club stuff going on in the church. The church is not designed for you to have no clicks and picks. Come on, somebody. I don't have that at my church. Mm -mm. I kill that demon right off. I don't care if you get mad or whatever. You do not run this ministry. I don't care how much money you give it. I don't care what you do. You are a body. You are one body in this church and you need to get with everybody and learn how to love on each other. And quit telling the pastor that God told you to leave the ministry when you know he didn't. You're cursing yourself. If you made a vow, if you stand up in front of that church and gave a vow when that pastor said at this ministry you would obey the leaders and and, 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 and get in the flow with people and love on people. This is what this ministry do. And you sit there and they come and shake your hand when you join that church. Then you have to stand up to that. You made a vow to God, not to man, to help him bring people to the kingdom of God. I'm preaching good already. I almost got excited. I'll come up out of this chair. I'll take off running. Because there's so many people, we got to get that percentage of 37% of people loving the Lord or going to church. It's not good. That's not good. We got a great work to do. If your pastor followed you to work, what would they say about you? If your pastor followed you home, I know you ain't going to bite him. Come on, somebody. So you have to learn how to be a good Christian inside of the building. Not going against the grain, with the grain, if that makes sense. I love you so much. My name is Pastor Charles Diggins. I hope that message found you because it found me first. Even as a pastor, I can't be no hypocrite. I got a love on you. I don't tell your business. If you come to me and say, Pastor, we need some help. I'm a little behind on this. If I can't help you, I'll do a fast offering. And everybody know in my church, we don't talk like that. Everybody can need some help sometime. I love you guys. Stay blessed. I hope this word found you. And just for a topic, let's kill the roaches.
God bless you.